Okay, so today we're going to make a threat level meter. This thing looks up the current threat level on the UK government website and then it points to the correct post-it note for what's currently happening in the world. Um, it obviously could be a very useful thing to have at this time. So the first thing we need to do is to make the little metal pointer and we need to find a way to attach the pointer onto the stepper motor. So I found that old UK main sockets are great for this. So place your socket down quite gently and then smash it to bits with a massive hammer. The next step is to drill out the rivet so that you can use your clamp properly. After you've done that, you need to look at making the rest of the pointer. So we'll have a bit of brass shaft that we'll just drill two slots in to fit the, um, the pointer and the little bit on the back. And then we'll cut the pointer out of some brass sheet. First the pointed end and then we'll start off with the rounded end and finish it off in a belt sander. So now you just poke them into the slots in the end of the pipe and um, get ready to solder them. So I'm going to use a blowtorch and a little bit of flux. Um, now in this video I've very slightly overheated it and you can kind of see that happening as it turns a slight copper colour. It's not holding anything so it doesn't really matter but yeah it would have been nice to keep the nice brass colour. After doing that, the next step is just to um, solder on the clamp, and then you're ready to look at doing the rest of it. Then you just need to find a relatively thick bit of wood big enough to take your pointer, and cut a hole in it the right shape for the step motor. The step motor should just fit in flush, and then you can put the pointer right on the back of it. You just need two screws to hold the stepper in. I'm going to put an LCD display on as well. Um, I'm going for a slightly post-apocalyptic look, so I'm putting it at a jaunty angle. And one of the nice side effects of this is that it avoids the pointer as the pointer spins around as well. The next step is to put the breadboard and the step motor driver on. I'm putting them on at angles as well to, um, to help avoid the pointer as it goes around. Just make sure that when you put the screws in, they don't touch the Esprino Wi-Fi when, it, um, when it's fitted. And the next step is the wiring. Um, there's full information in the link below the video, but you want to connect the LCD display up to ground and 5 volts. Note that in the video I'm actually connecting it to 3.3, but you just need to connect to the pin next door. You also need to connect I2C to pins B8 and B9. For the stepper motor driver, you need to connect it also to um, 0 and 5 volts, so exactly the same pins as the other one. In this video we are connecting it to ground and 5 volts, and then the four separate pins you need to connect to B10, B13, B14 and B15 which are all in a row right at the end of the board on the other side. And that's it, you're done. I've used two screws here just to hold everything in place and make it look a little bit tidier. So um, I've now got this set up. Uh, we've got a bunch of useful post-it notes here to tell you exactly what's going on. Um, this display may look like it's broken because it's got this bunch of solid characters, but this is actually showing that it's powered up fine. So first step, let's try and get this working. Um, so if we pop onto the Esprino website, uh, what we'll want to search for is 1604 or 1602, because it's a 16 by two character display. Um, we're connecting by I squared C. We could have used the one that didn't have the little backpack on the back of it, so you'll see that here you've got things soldered on there already. Um, you don't have to do that, but if you don't do that, then you have to connect a whole bunch of wires instead of just the four that we've got here. So um, we'll use this. Uh, now we've actually used um, B8 and B9 here. And um, as it happens, this particular display has an annoying custom um, I squared C address. So if we take that and we put that in, and now we upload, hopefully we'll see Hello World will appear. So great, we know that's working. Uh, and now we'll look at doing the stepper motor. So uh, let's have a look at this one here. Um, so luckily, the stepper motor module is actually, the example uses the exact same pins. Um, pin 10, 13, 14, 15 that are we've connected to here. So uh, let's, let's actually just get rid of that now and upload it. Now, if we do uh, motor.move, 
I should be able to move it 100 um, positions one way, which should be clockwise. Uh, move two, I think it should be. And there you go, it's moving. Um, so really the first thing we want to do at startup is to make sure this is in a known position because it's quite easy for this to get knocked when it's off and then it won't have any idea what's going on. So probably the best thing to do is to move it as far over one side as we can. Um, in fact, it's possible that a thousand won't actually be enough for this. But there you go. Now it's bumped into the end stop. I've put a little screw there to stop it going any further. And that's fine. And now we'll do motor.setHome, uh, which will make sure that everything goes from zero. So I guess first step is to figure out um, where we're going to want to be for the smiley face. Uh, and ooh, it's not quite 200. Let's see if we make that. Okay, 180 is good for that. Uh, and now to go right the way around, it's probably quite a lot. So now we know that there's actually just a thousand between there and, and there. So uh, first thing, when we want to start up, uh, we're gonna want to move that all the way back um, and we probably want to move it a little bit further back than that even. If we look at the documentation here, uh, what do we have? You can move it and you can say I want to move it back in one second and then you give it a function. So um, let's say we don't really care how long it takes and we'll have a function that gets called when it's finished moving that sets it to home. Oh, but first we probably want to move it back to 180 so that we actually have the home set at the smiley face. That'd be quite, quite handy. So if we try this out now, just copy this into here, see what happens. So this will only happen at power on. It'll need to kind of figure out what it's gonna do. And no. Right, but that's, that's I've actually completely messed up here. So what I should have done is put the set home here. So okay, let's try that. So the next step while we're waiting for this to go is to, um, is to connect to Wi-Fi. And for that, we'll just copy the example code that's on the, um, on the Espino site. Now, that didn't go all the way back because it was a bit too far around. So we'll just tweak that a little bit. Um, and we'll wait for that to go. So the next step is on the Esprino Wi-Fi page. We have some examples of how to use Wi-Fi here. Um, let's just nick this one because this is the code you need to, um, to work automatically when power's on. So, we know this works now um, because it's put us in the right location here. Um, we'll set the Wi-Fi connection off and we'll, um, we'll sort the motors out here. But if we, um, if we have a look at this now, now the motor's set up, we can say motor.move to naught and it shouldn't do anything at all because it's at home. But if we say motor.move to 1000, it should move all the way to this one and hopefully because there are five of them does that work uh no it doesn't it'll be 250 250 500 750 thousand so if i say 500 it'll go to to him uh it's close enough if you really cared you could um you could set different values for each one or you could even just move the post-its around so um this is going to connect. Um, let's put in my Wi-Fi network here. And um, we need to have a function called getPage. Now, the getPage function, there's one defined here. Um, so actually, let's just grab that and use it. Uh, we'll just, I'll just move these around a little bit so that we've got um, all the variables at the top. And We'll move the constant around, so we'll move the um, LCD initialization around as well. Because when you first power on, the LCD needs initialization, and you have to do that 
when power supplied as well. So, okay, we've got this. Uh, this should all work here. Uh, we've got the motor set up. We, we might as well set the motor up in the um, in the front as well. So we'll get rid of that because we know that works. And okay, and now we just want to kick off on init when we upload it, and we'll have that just for testing. We'll take it out. Um, the next step is to um, is to look at getting our threat information. Now, as it happens, um, the UK government has this um, thing for threat levels, and there's even an RSS feed. So if you look at this feed, you get this kind of thing. Now, unfortunately, this is HTTPS, but um, the Espino Wi-Fi can handle that. It just uses up uh, quite a lot of memory. So if I stuck this on, hopefully we'll see um, a bunch of data coming back. So let's, let's upload it and see what happens. Okay, that goes back. It was a little bit unhappy about the um, the I squared C, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, so let's. Um, I think that probably doing all the motor stuff um, was messing stuff up because that uses quite a lot of power, and so does the Wi-Fi. So let's uh, let's just stick a NIP motor in here so that we do this, uh, oh no, Let, let's chain them all up actually, that'd be handy. So that we, we initialize the motor and, um, and then we do the other stuff. So, okay, knit motor, and then we'll have a function here which is called, uh, we'll initialize the LCD first And we'll dump all the Wi-Fi stuff in here. Okay, everything's good. Let's try that. So now it's uploaded. Ooh, it's okay. Still complaining about that, but fine. So now do the usual. Wait for it to get back to the end and to go up to the smiley face. Now it's, um, you can see from the blue LED here that it's connecting to Wi-Fi, hopefully. Uh, at some point it should say connected. As if on cue. Um, and then it's, uh, it's dumping back all the information it's received. Now you can see there's uh, a few little, little arrows here. And these are because um, this function here is getting called multiple times with multiple bits of data. And to be sure that we actually get the correct data, we want to add all of this together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll remove that. We'll say data equals, actually let's call it contents to avoid some confusion. Uh, and we'll just add D to contents. And then when the connection closes, we'll, we'll deal with it and see all the information we've got there. So to avoid all this complete faff of um, of going through initializing Wi-Fi and the pins, we'll just update the single function and we'll call it again. Okay, here we go. So we're looking for something that says current threat level severe. So we'll just search for threat level actually, those characters. So we'll say um, index is contents.index of threat level. If index is greater than or equal to naught, which means it's found it, then we will um, find a second index, which is the index of the um, of the end bracket, because we've got um, in here when it says threat level severe, and then we've got this bracket, which we can use to find out where to read the end of. So if we do that and look at from index, and now all we want to do is do console.log, if I can spell, um, contents substring index to index two, um, and that's about it. Let's move this around a bit so we can see the, see the text a little bit better. Uh, 
Okay, so now if I run this, it'll say threat level severe, which is great. Um, now, there are actually uh, 6, 12, 14 characters here that we don't want. So all we'll do is we'll stick that in the substring there. And hopefully, next time we update it, it'll say just severe. Okay, good. So um, let's get rid of that. Let's write it into a variable. Um, and let's create a new function that we'll call handle threat. Which uh, will take that threat and we'll do something with it. So, okay, handle threat, threat here. I guess the first step is we probably just want to um, want to write it onto the LCD. I mean, that would be good. So if we go back to here, um, we probably, there's a function somewhere for clearing it. So yeah, let's just do that. Um, I'm not sure we need a set cursor, but we might as well use it. Um, and we'll write threat colon and then add threat to it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, the next step would be to find out where to point our um, our pointer. Um, and that's pretty easy. So I've I've written up a bunch of the threats here. Um, so we'll whoops. Let's create a variable called severity and we'll just use threats.index of threat. So now if it's in there, um, we'll get a number from um, from 0 to 4. Next step, uh, if it's actually in there, if it's not, I guess we, we probably don't want to move the um, move the needle at all. But now it's pretty easy to um, to just say motor.move to um, and we, we knew that it was severity times 250 because we knew that that was 0, 250, 500, 750, 1000. Um, so yeah, let's, um, let's whack all this stuff up here and we know we need that as well. And let's try it. So hopefully it's gonna work now. Yep, and it's updated threat to severe and hopefully it'll move the point around. The next step to make this work all the time is um, just to make sure that we, we keep trying to update this ever so often. So in fact, all we have to do here is where we said get page, um, we'll just add something to a set interval um, and set interval will call that function every so many milliseconds. So that's one second, that is 60 seconds. I think probably checking every minute's fine. Um, and that's it, that's all we have to worry about. So if I upload this now, hopefully, uh, it'll go through the, um, the process of starting first. We could change hello world to say something like something else. Uh, but let's not bother, I mean, this is working fine. So that starts off here. It's gonna try and get the, um, get the threat level and 60 seconds later, it'll try again, hopefully, um, but we'll see. Okay, now it's connected. And now it's updated the threat. So um, it's, it really is just as easy as that. Um, all you have to do is remove that on in it that we put down the bottom, upload it again, type save. And now, um, every time that we start this, um, if I unplug the power and plug it back in, let's try this, it should start up. So that's it, thanks for watching. If you wanna find out where to get any of this stuff, check out the link below the video. The Espino website's got links to where to find all of this stuff. Please subscribe to me on YouTube if you like this. I also have a Patreon page, so if you really like this, please um, give me some money to help me keep making stuff like this. Thanks for watching.